I'm working on some electromagnetic induction experiments. This is a really very poor horseshoe magnet that I purchased uh, off of Amazon, but it does have north and south sides marked. But some of the experiments you're going to be doing are um, doing a little bit of experimenting with where you run, for example, a conductor down through a, a magnetic field so that the changing flux induces a voltage and a current and a wire. A problem is, for what I want to do, this magnet is way, way, way too puny. It just won't do the job. So what I'm going to try to do is take some neodymium magnets like this. This is a one inch cube magnet purchased off Amazon. Extremely powerful, but they're very brittle. You can see this is chipped. My Lens Law experiments that I was working on, they got away from me and shattered. But uh, I bought two more, and what I'm going to try to do is glue one of them against... Let's see what happens. Probably broke again. Yep. Anyway, glue one. Let's get that away from there. We'll glue one to one side of this drill press vise, and one to the other, where we can control the gap between them and hopefully get a very strong, very uniform magnetic field uh, that'll help with what I'm trying to do. But as I showed you here, my, my mistake, don't do that. Uh, these things are dangerous. They can pinch your fingers. They uh, are very brittle and it doesn't take much to make them break. So I'm not even sure this is going to work, but I'm going to, I'm going to try it and we'll see what happens. Okay, we've got the uh, one inch cube magnets glued into the drill press vise. And uh, what we did was use a Gorilla Glue epoxy and uh, glued uh, one of the magnets to the faceplate there, took it off, unscrewed it, got it on, then uh, very carefully placed the other one inch uh, cube magnet up against it, but using the uh, that paint uh, stir there as a spacer. Then put Gorilla Glue Epoxy on the other end of that uh, second magnet, then brought the other end of the, of the drill press uh, vise close to it and left it there, let it set and cure overnight. Worked pretty good, so it's, it's holding up pretty good. So uh, don't get a compass too close to these powerful magnets. It'll reset the magnetization in it. We're going to use a galvanometer. It's a, a millivolt galvanometer with some enamel 22 gauge copper wire for the rest of this. Okay, I've got a coil wire. Got about five wires running this way. Now we'll get a lot more voltage by passing it through there. But if you'll notice, um, we got our gap now set at about two and three eighths. That's the maximum I can do in this drill press arrangement. If I move this, this coil, of course the speed makes a difference and I'm not obviously not real accurate with what I'm doing. If you go one direction, it goes uh, positive, the other negative, depending on the right hand rule. We're not gonna worry about that right now. But if you look at the meter, the galvanometer, when I do this in the middle, I get all it looks like about just a couple of millivolts. Now, if I move it closer to one of the magnets, the voltage is greater, indicating a you know, non-uniform field in here. Greater intense field through here and here. Of course, if you turn these wires, this loop like this, you don't get much at all because we're not cutting through the lines of force like we would going across them. So you shouldn't get much this way, like you do that, that way. It does make a difference. So what we're going to do now is close up that gap and uh, get it down about as close as we can get, maybe an eighth of an inch or so, and still get these wires through there. And that should make a big difference. So let me go ahead and close that up. This isn't exactly an eighth of an inch, maybe slightly more. Okay, now we'll, you can see much, much greater induced voltage up to as high as 15 millivolts, plus or minus, depending on the direction of movement. 
So definitely the field is more intense this way. I doubt that it's a real uniform magnetic field because this is not a perfect situation here. But definitely better than definitely better than trying to use a real weak magnet like this where you get almost nothing. So, so what I'm gonna do in my next uh, video, we're gonna use this for a very interesting electromagnetic induction experiment. So hopefully you'll uh, come back and take a look at that. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please uh, subscribe and uh, check out the links to our other videos. We'd appreciate it. Thank you.